Okay, I'm out with the Bugs B5W, I think it is. Uh, it's actually soaking wet. I've just had it in, uh, just walked out to this point, uh, which is lovely. I've just had it in the box for two minutes. We had a downpour, rainbows, all that sort of stuff. Beautiful. Scotland. And then it's all lovely and clear. <laughs> So that's Scotland for you. So nice looking little bugs here. Uh, there's loads of other ones out there that are exactly the same. Uh, the, J, the JJRC do one. There's two or three other different ones as well, but basically it's uh, it's the same thing. So I'm going to do it with the Bugs 5W. The transmitters are the same on the others as well. They're just basically rebadged, and some of them have different uh, body style in as well. We've got a nice tilt tiltable camera there, and it's not on a gimbal, but it is on uh, anti vibration. It's got three connectors there. You just simply do a quarter to turn to actually attach it so it's really nice and the camera can tilt up and down via this uh, roll uh, thing here so you just pull it down and up so I, I like that it's a really nice sort of thing uh, nice and compact as well uh, I think they're 1806 motors I'll put down if, if they're not which is the same as the Bugs 2 from memory uh, and we'll just see how we get on uh, quick run through the actual transmitter itself uh, they've locked off these two buttons at the back which uh, I think is quite good that they do Bugs do and these ones here are actually lock solid as well we've got our GPS on if it slides to the right and it's off if it goes to the left we've got headless mode it's on when it goes to the right and off when it goes to the left as well we've got uh, fly in mode 2 or mode 1 I fly in mode 2 and I'll show you how to change that in a second if you want to. Uh, we've got our on-off slider here. We have the LCDs up here and I'll show you all that in a second as well. We've got uh, to prime the motors. You can just quickly press this once and it will prime them or just pull the two sticks down and in uh, and then that just literally puts it into idle and then you can use the auto takeoff button here which pops it up to about a metre I think it is on this from memory uh, or uh, if not you can just give it some throttle and it will take off uh, and it's got auto land as well. I don't really see any sense in the auto takeoff auto land because um, you've got a throttle that does it so uh, for me not really <laughs> uh, we've got um, because it's a, a GPS system it knows where the uh, transmitter is and obviously where the quad is um, so we get distances up as well and we have a true return to home as well it actually returns to the point it took off from not from the point you bound it at I've done this test on other bugs and that's how it works and we could take stills by one press here or we can hold it down and start the video and stop the video I tend to do it on the app um, just I don't know why I just do sort of thing uh, just the way I do it uh, and also you've got a micro SD uh, card in the back here so you can either record it back to your phone in the app or you can record it 1080p on here obviously you're going to get better quality recording it but on the actual uh, quad itself I don't know why anyone wouldn't put a micro SD card in the back there we've got nice bright LEDs as well and I have had a play with this indoors so I've made sure it all binds up and everything but um, I haven't actually got it out for a flight yet so this should be quite good so uh, if you're binding up for the first time, you must press this one, uh, hold down the uh, uh, red uh, button there, which is the start and stop the motors, turn it on, that puts it into bind mode. And then oh, also, just while I'm here, we're in mode two, which is its uh, default mode. If we hold this down for three seconds, it will go to mode one, hold it down for three seconds again, it goes to mode two. And the difference there is this is your throttle, so you go up and down on the throttle, the quad will go up and down, turn to the right and turn to the left. That pitches forward, pitches backwards, rolls to the right, rolls to the left. And if you go into mode one, they're basically swapped around. Um, so I I've never flown in mode one. So if you fly in mode one, you'll know what you're talking about there. So it's, uh, I'll just actually turn that back off again. Pop that back on and then turn it on. And then what I was waiting for was this flashing LEDs here. Slide the battery in. And then you've got a little lock there as well, which is really nice so it won't slip out. Oh, by the way, the battery is a 1800 milliamp hour two cell and it's a proprietary one as well. So, and if you notice, while I was blethering there, we got an, a beep off this very quickly and then this one beeped, which meant it had bound up. And we just had a beep beep off here, which means we're ready to calibrate the GPS system. So nice bright LEDs. So you turn it, rotate it when it's uh, in sort of in flat mode when you've got these alternating like that. And then they go to green. So we had yellow first of all, then to green. Point it upwards or downwards. I don't think it makes any difference. Um, and then we keep rotating it. And then it goes to its default colours, which is red at the front and sort of yellow at the back, I would say. And we'll just quickly show you that, uh, the camera tilting up and down. So if I pull this down, it's got quite a smooth sort of movement, actually. And it's not too bad. Because <laughs> some of these ones are, are not good. But that's, that's actually a lot better than what a lot of the ones I've seen. 
Okay, so I've already had a go with this at home just to make sure the Wi-Fi binds up. So if I go on here, it has already picked it up. There's no Wi-Fi signals around this area, I can assure you. Uh, but what we have uh, is the quad set up a Wi-Fi hotspot and we just basically log on to it. So if you haven't, uh, for the first time you connect up, you just need to go into your Wi-Fi settings and then just connect up to the bugs and it'll have a number behind it. I'm gonna come back to the main area and then we've got the Bugs Go app and then B5W, like I said, I had a play around with this at home. You can select different models in here as well. It tells you all your warnings about where not to fly. It explains the whole app completely, which is rather nice. And then in here, we can actually change some of the settings. So um, I've actually turned mine off, but you can have maximum uh, flight altitude. Uh, it default is, uh, well, you, you put it in on that one. This one, I think default is usually comes up at 80, I think, and I've taken that off because I do a quick range test for it as well. Uh, and then uh, maximum uh, flight radius uh, is, is five meters. So you can, you can just set it uh, if you want to uh, do an orbit around something. So uh, I'll show you those in a minute. Uh, so don't, don't, I just left it the way I'd already set it. Okay, so let's start that video. And we're away and it says TF because it's recording it back to the card there. Going to um, just press that and it'll start the motors. <laughs> it will throw all the water off the props as well, hopefully. Uh, I'm on GPS mode and we've got loads of, we've got 16 up. There we go. And the wind is coming from here quite strong and it will be blowing up here this rig. Really moving, trying, well, really trying to move that and actually it's not moving at all. It's doing really well. So first of all, I tell you what, let's just give it a bit of a buzz around just see what we're like for speed on it which will make awful video I know yeah it flies pretty nicely <laughs> that GPS is incredible when you ease off the stick she just stops stone dead just to show you a little technique I do quite often uh, when I'm flying is I, I turn off the GPS and then you get really nice smooth footage I'm going to have to take control of that because it's just going to ram it straight into those trees. There we go. There we come. I'm just going to actually going to turn off the GPS, see how fast we go with the GPS off. I don't think it actually makes a lot of difference, to be honest. So that's off. No, it's not a terrific amount of difference. Nice little flyer there. Okay, I'm gonna pop the GPS back on and I'll just show you this radius, um, uh, sort of point of interest it is really, I suppose. So let's just see how far away, or oh, five meters. So I'm just gonna to have to mind that tree. So uh, let's just do uh, radius there, press yes. And then it will come round. I'm going to pop it up to miss those trees. Yeah, and I'm slightly off on my uh, my distance there. But again, you can alter this in all the settings. And of course, the nice thing is you can point the camera down as well while it's doing it. Oh, there we go. Zero. I actually like this camera. The, the fact you can tilt it is really cool. Well, yeah, that works really nicely, actually. So I'm just going to stop that. We've got um, follow me mode as well. So let's just bring that down. Actually, I'll keep the camera at a little bit of an angle for the follow me. There we go. So I'm just going to pop the camera back up a wee bit, just make sure I'm in shot. There we go. And that's good. And now I'm just going to hit the follow me, and then all you have to do is press yes. And that should be between 5 and 20, 35 metres. Ooh, we're five away, so I wonder if it's wondering that it's not actually picked that out. No, it hasn't. Okay, let's try it from here then. That might be a bit better. Uh, let's just turn that around so it's looking at me. There we go. Yep. Yeah, it's done the bugs thing of just hunting back and forwards and then it's hopefully found us. Yep, it has. So there we go. So if you're on a mountain bike or anything, you'll probably keep up reasonable sort of speed. Not a, not a serious downhill, but um, certainly pretty good. Yep. 
that's good and then we'll come back towards it and also you can alter the height as well so of course with this system you can alter the height and then point the camera down a wee bit more so i'm not too sure how much it would lose us oh no it's lost us now oh yeah and ah it's coming with me but it's just no it's stopped yeah obviously just tilting it down it's just moved too far away so that's fine yeah and i can't take control i just have to stop that so it does work it just shouldn't have played around with the height and the uh, the camera angle We've also got, uh, which I never really see a lot of sensing because you don't get Google mapped up, and it's something that really doesn't interest me anyway. You can actually point where you want it to go. Um, so uh, on a path or whatever, on a mission, um, uh, like I say, I really don't get it myself, but I'll, I'll just point that camera up a wee bit more again. There we go. And then, so if I go into here, you can, it's called tracking, so 2.8, oops. Uh, sorry, let me just, I was trying to make the map smaller there, so. Oh, hey, I've got the maps up. Do you know what? I played around with this for ages and I couldn't get it to work. And then it's actually gone and got the maps. Oh, perfect. Oh, well, I do apologise. There we go. Well done. So I'm just going to delete that one. And I'm just literally, let me just grab one of those. So the track one, and I'm just going to go out over the lock and, and then come back and then just submit and then go there we go and it's just literally gone up to its first point and then round i still don't really to me it don't do it um, the reason being is i'd rather fly this <laughs> i want to i enjoy flying so i like being in control of flying it to where i want to go not tell it where it needs to go sort of thing if you see what i mean um, i'd prefer to do it with the controls rather than just with an app so i'm just going to stop that there we go and then i'm going to do it the other way which is the point one so we literally can put points around oh is this the one that you only get two points no you get, i'm sure you get more than two points for it there we go yeah, sorry, I thought there was not. My hands are really cold. <laughs> now we've got beautiful sunshine. There we go. So I, I don't know why it's not. Ah, there it is. It is letting me do it. So there we go. And then just submit and then go. And like I say, I just really don't get it myself. Not really my idea of fun. Um, but hey, these things are they're not just for me, I'm sure. <laughs> well, there we go. And again, We've got a nice, nice thing with it is we've got control. We can go up and down if we want to, and we can alter the actual uh, uh, camera angle as well, which is really nice. I like that. There we go. We're back on control. Right, so I think we've got enough battery power. I'm going to actually give it a go at doing a range test. Oh, what I do first of all, before we do a range test, I'll just do a quick selfie. Which could be a good idea. We're stood in this beautiful, glorious sunshine. So I'm just going to stop the video. And then I'm going to swap it and just do a still. We get a nice thing. Obviously, you can point the camera down. I wonder if I've played around with this. Yeah, you don't get anything. Uh, oh, you do get it up on there. That's good. Yeah, it does work. Uh, I'm, I don't tend to use that. I don't know why. No reason not to. And then, obviously, if we just want to do a, well, not a selfie, but a, a scenic shot over there sort of thing, I suppose. Show Scotland at its best. There we go. Now, if there was a strong breeze, it would, the GPS would be fighting it and the uh, camera angle would not be particularly great. So what I tend to do there again is just kill the GPS for a second. It will stabilize and then it will go level, which I think is nice. Yeah, I like it. The bug system will also return to home without the GPS on as well, which is rather good. God, that is lovely footage with it off, you see. You just get much smoother footage, I always think. Obviously, when you roll and everything, you're going to get uh, a change. Uh, obviously, it's going to go, uh, you're going to get an angle then sort of thing, but that's really nice. Right, then, what should I go for? A... Let's put the GPS back on. I think I'll go down over that way this time for a nice little range test. Whoops. So, here we go. Let's see how we get on with this one. Whoops. 
did say it was lethal here. There we go. So we're 150 metres and still got signal. I can still see the quad as well, which we're already, ah, we just dropped signal, so I looked up for the quad. 200 metres, we sort of lost, oh no, we're still just about holding up, just eased off on the sticks. No, it's not going any further. No. Yeah, it says disconnected from now. I'm just going to run it out. I'll give it about 300, 400 metres. You can still control it. You'll get a beep off the transmitter when it starts to go too much. There we go. So just at 400 metres there. I'm going to press return to home. And then it should start its merry little way home. There we go, it's starting to count down now. Hopefully you can see that. And obviously we've got no count up here. So it literally lost signal at uh, 246 there. So we're down to three, 400 metres now. Also oh, we're about 450 metres, a fair old way. Um, I've, I, it's not really my scene again. I just do it for the reviews actually, to be honest, just to show you, because it really doesn't bother me that much, the range. I, I'm, uh, I prefer flying close proximity to things and I and I enjoy that um, I find it you know uh, distance and just flying through big open spaces of air is not that great I don't think there we are about 100 meters we've come back on and it's right up there I gave it some quite a bit of elevation and we just see how good it gets at coming back so the beep 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 now is actually from the fact that the battery's low uh, we come down to two bars on the actual um, transmitter itself on the uh, actual quad itself sorry and how's it doing oh yeah it's pretty spot on i mean i took off from there so you know Bug system to return to home when it's low on battery as well automatically. God, and Bennett was about half a metre out, I would say. So I'm just going to cancel that. Whoops, we won't let me cancel it. There we go. Oh, it's literally going to land. Gee whiz. Oh, there we go. And now it's cancelled. God, I took off. I think I took off there. <laughs> That's pretty good. So. <laughs> I've had that before on bugs where you, you don't seem to cancel it. You, see, you can sort of cancel it when it's up there, but when it's literally on final descent, it doesn't seem to be aware to cancel it, or perhaps you have to hold it for longer, I don't know. I'm just going to pop the motors going, so down and in, uh, get some going. And let's just have a, a little bit of a play around and run the battery out, and now I can tell you how long our actual flight is. So. Oh, let me show you headless mode. Not something that I'm ever so thrilled with, but headless mode. Let me just turn the quad around, so there, the quad's facing that way. I'll bring it down so you can see it. We can see from here, quads facing that way, and then forward is just over that way, backwards towards me. And it doesn't matter what way the actual um, quad is is going, uh, is facing. I, 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 yeah, I can fly it, but I don't enjoy it. It's not not pleasurable for me, I don't think. Um, so if I turn it around that way, and I can still just fly it over that way. But I just, yeah, we just. Don't, I prefer just flying, to be honest, um, not in headless mode, so much better. So when the battery gets low, the quad will ascend and literally do a return to home as well, sort of thing. So, wow, it's nice and that bright love sun. Okay. So let me just show you, I might as well play around with doing some more footage sort of thing. So I'm going to turn off the GPS and then you'll see you get some nice, nice quality footage. I always think it's a really good way of flying. We're getting, uh, it's getting a bit of lens flare, you could do with a uh, lens hood on that. So I'm just going to turn it around just a wee bit and just get that out. That's really nice. <laughs> there we go. And like I say, you get some nice smooth footage with the GPS off. If you've got the GPS on, you're, you're fighting because it it's trying to get a position hold. So as soon as you ease off on the stick, that's what you'll get. So if you have the have that off, you get. Um, I always think you get much nicer footage. I do it quite a lot, even on the big quads, the expensive ones. Um, so it's not just these ones, it's not the cheaper ones that it's an issue with. 
and with it off like i say you get a nice level horizon and just let it drift in the wind it's really good if i pop the gps on now there we go and it's just gonna the horizon is not going to be level anymore because it's literally constantly trying to just hold its position and if i try and do that smooth move that i did just a minute ago it's pretty smooth but then if i ease off the stick you suddenly get this roll back you do not get that when you've got gps off sort of thing That's really nice. I reckon the uh, FPV is probably flyable. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. That's really nice. I'll try not to hit a tree, but... <laughs> Yay, look at that, that's nice. Good stuff. You want to be lousy up. <laughs> oh yeah. I think we've lost signal again. Yeah, we have. Oh no, it's back on. The yaw is quite fast on it. It's quite difficult to get it nice and slow, to be perfectly honest. That's good, lovely stuff. Oh yeah, I'll just show you that we do, even with the GPS off, it will work. <laughs> I love that you get the drift as well when the GPS off. So, so even with the GPS off, it's starting to drift away. I press the return to home, it then locks it, takes it up, and then brings it back. There we go. I'm not going to let that do that all again. Oops, sorry, that was me pressing it twice. There we go. Yes, yeah, so you see, you can turn it off. Okay, that's just... There we go, see that's just catching the breeze and just really gently going. Really nice. Or the other thing is if you haven't got any breeze, obviously, nice smooth stick input is a really nice way to get some really nice footage. That's, that's what you want. You're getting just a slight bit of roll on it, but heck, it's got no gimbal on it or anything. It's doing pretty good. There we go. Right now, so it's coming back in because the battery's really low now. And it's just going to bring it back in. So I haven't, I'm still with GPS off, but it still knows the battery's so low it needs to come in and land. There we go, descended. Actually, really fast. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, and then it stops. So. Descent's pretty good on this for what it is. And the other thing we've got on this, so I'm going to hold over the uh, red button. If I hold that down for three seconds, it will kill the motors. There we go. I just caught it in my hand. But obviously, it will just literally plummet out the sky. That was a really nice flight. That's a lovely little quad. I like it. Hits the bugs. I'm bound to. The beeping is uh, because we're low on battery. Um, if we disconnect the... Uh, turn this off, you don't get a beep on the... Uh, actual quad itself because the signal's lost but if i take this battery out you'll get a different beep because uh, you do get a warning if you've if your signal's broken from the quad back to the there we go so we get a beep 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 now so that's nice yeah and it's dried it all out as well very good so i'm going to run some onboard footage for you so you can have a, a look at a load of different flights i've done with it and then you can make up your mind whether or not this is the uh quad for you perhaps the uh i'm impressed with the whole system i think for value for money i think it's really good uh and it sort of does everything really quite nicely running through things the camera itself i like the way the you could alter the angle when it's in flight which is good and uh it's quite smooth on its movement as well a lot of them they sort of go in click stops which is really not very good at all so um, this is really nice and smooth for what it is and um, the anti-vibration works pretty well as well so um, they're pretty smooth flies the bugs to be honest with the brushless motors and everything they're really good the props are quite stiff so if you came up against anything they could probably sort of wreck into it uh, but you know that that could happen with virtually any quad but they are quite stiff compared to some of the other bugs models the, you get a spare set of props with it as well and they're clearly marked A and B for the rotation that they go. Basically, there's two different ways, uh, two different sets of props if you're new to flying. You've got these ones that go around uh, counterclockwise, and you've got these ones that go around clockwise. There's self-tightening uh, nuts on them. And if you might notice, there's a little sort of pip 
uh, drilled into there and there isn't one into there. That means this one, if you undo it, it undoes counterclockwise uh, like a normal right-handed thread. This one's the opposite. So to undo it, you turn it clockwise. Sort of. uh, so they basically do tighten up. Uh, I've always just held it and done it with these little knurled um, prop nuts here. Never had a problem with it, but you do get a little uh, prop nut sort of holder there uh, that you can actually do it with and tighten it up or loosen it sort of thing. I've, uh, it, yeah, I suppose it's handy. Yeah, it's a nice little, nice little touch. You've got a little Phillips screwdriver and you've got loads of screws in here uh, if you needed to strip it down. I haven't had any issues, so I've had no reason to strip it down at all. It's got nice LEDs, I think they're nice and bright. The battery is a proprietary battery, as I was saying, and it's 800 milliamp, 1800 milliamp hour, sorry, and it's a two cell, um, and it does a pretty good job. I, I mean, I was getting around between 16 and 17 minutes of flight. Um, 16, yeah, <laughs> when you get towards 17, it just comes and lands, uh, it runs itself right out. Uh, if you'll, I think, the, the thing is, with, if you're within 15 meters, it will just drop to the ground. If not, it will go up a cent and come and uh, come back to where it took off from. Or somebody did mention it's where you actually arm the motors. I don't quite know why you'd arm them somewhere and then move it somewhere and then take off. But I've always assumed it comes back to uh, its takeoff point. Uh, I haven't actually fully tested that. Like I say, with return to home, when it comes within range, I always just take control of it and then I can uh, then I'm back in control and I can do do what what I want with it. Carrying on with the battery and the charger, and it's a little bit of an unusual one. You've got these sort of multi pins in here and along here for actually controlling the bugs, and you've got three little pins in there that charge it up. So you just simply pop that into there. They give you a little balanced charger, and it charges through the balanced charger port. Pop that into, into there, and then it's a USB charger. So you plug that into there, and then plug that into any USB you've got. But be warned, this can take up to about five hours to recharge, which isn't a bother if you're gonna charge it up at night time or you don't fly that often, but uh, I think most people wanna get out and fly and then fly again. Uh, so what I recommend, and I've stuck it in behind the transmitter here, is one of these, they're about seven quid. I'll put a link down in the description for you. It'll charge it up in just over an hour, and it charges it through the uh, balanced charger port. So we just simply bypass that bit, plug that into there, and then you're ready to go. You get little red LEDs when it's charging, and then they go green when it's fully charged. Uh, and the nice thing is, you'll probably get into the hobby. I hope you do anyway. You've got a two and a three cell uh, charger here as well, so that's really good. The transmitter range worked well. I'm sure it would have gone further, but I find once you're going out of FPV range, there's, there's hardly any enjoyment in the flying, to be perfectly honest. So uh, that's why I brought it back home, but it probably does go further, like I say. Got a little uh, phone adapter there that you can put on. You don't have to fly it with the FPV. You can just fly it, you know, line of sight if you want. So you don't need to put the phone on if you just want to learn how to fly. I suggest that would be a really good thing to do. And the GPS on and off is an instant thing. That's really nice. There's no sort of lag or delay with that. And I like these little transmitters. I think they work really well. They are entry level, but they do work well. And the, like I say, the control for the uh, camera was really excellent as well. Now that annoying beep that you get off the transmitter when the battery is getting low, it's basically about half. Uh, it, I got it after about nine minutes every time I flew it, which is normal for bugs. It's, it's really the way they do it. Uh, but then you get about another seven and a half minutes of flight. So as a low battery warning, I don't think it's very sensible. I think it would be better if it went up to like, I don't know, 15 minutes or 14 minutes. And then you know you've got about a minute to get back. If it goes at nine minutes, you start to ignore it, um, which is really daft. <laughs> obviously it is eventually going to come down uh, so you, you will keep it in close to yourself obviously when you're flying around uh, I really like it as you probably got that impression uh, I can't find anything really wrong with it it seems to do a really good job for what it is uh, and what it's aimed at as well uh, good for beginners and good for anyone that wants to do a little bit of nice little aerial footage there and the other thing you get with it, and MGX uh, RC are really good with this, is you get the quick start guide, uh, which is basically the size of the transmitter, uh, running through everything there. It's a really good thing. And then their uh, actual instruction manual as well is really good, really clear, simple to use. Um, and they run through everything. They're, they're, you know, they've been doing this for ages and they've really got it right. Everything's fully explained in there. So all in all, I expect you've already got the impression that I really like it, and I really do. It's a nice product. Uh, I do thank you for your support of the channel, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.